Grazie. I would like to spend a few minutes talking with you today about data, the dry world of data, but it's your world of data because it's the data relative to your company. Whether you own it, whether you bought it, whether you've earned it, your company cannot move faster than the data that you have and how you use it. Uh, the, the, the whole meaning of your company is contingent upon the data that you have. Uh, a little while ago, David gave examples of companies that failed. One of the reasons that they failed was because they, were, they, they just simply did not follow the data. They did not follow where the data was leading them. So let's take a few minutes and go back and look at how data has been used historically and then bring it up to the present to some of the leading edge technologies that are being applied to data and how you can use those technologies to move your companies forward. So in the past, data was always coincidental. It always had to do something with a condition. And the, the, the historic um, moniker for that, that, uh, that condition was inventory. I have a product. I'm running low on that product. I have a just-in-time inventory system. I know that my product must come down to this level, and that gives me enough time to order more and then get that product by the time the product runs out. Okay, that's a traditional look. It's, it's ancient, and it's how we've looked at data it, in, in, in many uh, dimensions. Um, when I was in university, I did some internship at a grocery store in the United States. We used data like that, and that was the only way we used data. We also used situational data, data that just happened to be coincidental. It happened to be the season of winter. I know I use more of a certain product in winter, so I order more of that product. This is all coincidental data. It answers the question, what? Still, this company and other companies I was associated with were affected by changes are basically things outside of what they understood. They understood what it took to bring additional product in. They understood what it, it took to order product. But they didn't understand the forces that were working around them. So they started taking, basically, measurements of their clients. They started looking at information on their clients. And if you take it from, for example, it doesn't matter whether you have a large business or a small business. You know, it, it, the, the, the principles are the same. If you, uh, for example, have two clients or have a client and you know that client's name and you know what that client buys, then you can predict information about them. The, the, this grocery store started that about 20 years ago. And they started with what's, what was con uh, traditionally called the, the membership card. You have grocery chains here in Italy that have that and they use it today. They use information such as your name and they track what you buy based on your name. That's the most rudimentary form of data analytics there is. But there are strange coincidences there. We noticed when we were doing you know, inventories, et cetera, et cetera, we noticed that when one customer would order, would basically purchase a diaper, that same customer would also buy Pepsi. Why? It makes no sense at all. But it's coincidental data that we found a high incidence, of, and we called it the Pampers and Pepsi problem. When they would buy uh, diapers, they would also buy soda. Why would they do this? We didn't know, but what we did know was that it generated, it generated sales. So we saw grocery stores starting to put things like Pepsi and Pampers, or diapers and soda, together uh, to basically increase sales. What we didn't know was why. And that's when companies started uh, either purchasing or acquiring demographic data for their customers. Where their customers lived, how much, their, the, how much money those customers made, what kind of lifestyles did they have. When you basically, when you do that, you start to understand why. Why customers buy what they buy. Why would a customer who buys, buys diapers also need to buy soda, okay? But there's a new frontier. The new frontier is predictive. It basically puts, it leads your customer forward. It gives your customer more information to back up. Correlational data, if you're marketing and you have correlational data, it identifies a need. 
marketing is more than just selling. It's, a, it's identifying a need and, and selling to that need. Predictive data, which is where data is going in the future, actually it's here now, is the new frontier. It leads your customer forward. It uses information that is existent or extant in the environment to, that predicts how your customer is going to behave in the future. So it helps you as a marketer, it helps you as a business, not just identify a need and meet it, but to create a need, to understand what your customer or what your client needs and create a need with your product. Basically, it treats every customer as a market. Whether you have a, a business that has only large customers, which you already do this, you treat, many companies treat their customers as individual markets. This is what happens on a micro scale as well. Customers are treated because each company knows each individual customer. A customer can be targeted. A customer can be marketed to. A customer's needs can be identified. And you can market to that customer. It's called consumable content. And it has to do with telling a story to your customer. Your customer is more likely to buy from you, have brand loyalty, and keep buying from you if you can instill some sense of storytelling, analyzing or basically giving your customer something that they can understand. Um, also, uh, data-driven strategies give, give meaningful attention to your brand. Uh, they, they basically identify, help you identify your brand with each customer. It puts experiences in a completely new context. There's a problem. Whenever we would acquire a new company, in any, any company that I had, had worked in, sometimes we would acquire companies and bring them in. Sometimes we would launch new projects and, and basically try to launch those projects in a new environment. Every time we would do this, we would understand one thing, or we came to understand one thing. About half of our available, uh, available data was bad. The problem is, we just didn't know what half. That is your challenge. In a consumer environment, or whether your customers are large or small, about 3% of your data is bad every month. 3% of your data goes bad each month. So, for example, after a year, you have nearly half of your data that is out of date. So it is very, very important to find data resources and keep that data up to date. Um, I'll close by saying, you know, thank you, but also saying, with respect to your data, everything is important. Tutti significa qualcuno. Also, in the spirit of Noita here, um, vision without execution is simply imagination. Grazie.